Hello, this is Brother Kramer from the Math Department at BYU-Idaho. In these videos, I'll be talking about inference for two proportion. So here is, here is the outline for it. First, I'll be reviewing some things like uh, reviewing a statistic versus parameter, as well as reviewing what we did with the one proportion procedure. And then I'll be talking about confidence intervals for two proportion, and then I'll wrap it up with hypothesis testing. So first of all, let's review the difference between a parameter and a statistic. A parameter is a measure of the population that is typically unknown, but we'd like to estimate it. So for instance, back in Unit 2, we dealt with the population mean, which is mu. And now for Unit 3, we're dealing with the population proportion, which is p. So then the statistic, the difference between a parameter and a statistic, is a measure from the sample. And the statistic is used to measure the unknown parameter, for instance, x bar, or a sample mean. Okay, And, and now we're dealing with p hat, or our sample proportion. Portion. And x bar, our sample mean, is used to estimate mu, which is our population mean. And p hat, which is our sample proportion, is used to estimate p, which is our population proportion. Now, you've noticed probably that we've that you've seen a lot of different uh, symbols that use p. For instance, we have p hat, which is our sample proportion, p, which is our population proportion, p naught, which is our population proportion portion for the null hypothesis, which quite often you just use as p. And then p tilde is the adjusted sample proportion. That's what we use with confidence intervals, where it's x plus 2 divided by n minus n plus 4. So we are, so I'm just laying this out here because you should keep track of the many different symbols that we use p for this unit. Okay? So now for the confidence interval, here's the formula for the confidence interval where we basically we take p tilde, which is n plus 2 divided by um, x plus 2 divided by n plus 4, and then we add and subtract a margin of error using a critical value p tilde in our sample size. And so that's what we did with a confidence interval for one proportion. Then we dealt with a hypothesis test for one proportion. We stated the null and alternative hypothesis for p. So p is equal to a certain value, somewhere between 0 and 1, since we're dealing with proportions. And the alternative could be that it's not equal to for a two-sided test, or greater than or less than for a one-sided test. We then calculated a test statistic where we can do it by hand, or we can use the Excel tool, which, which I showed you in the last lesson, which I will use again for this lesson for two proportion. Then we can determine the p-value based on the test statistic. So we can either use Excel to get our p-value, or we can go to the applet to get our p-value as well. Then the last two steps are the same last two steps that you've seen in every other test. Reject the null if the p-value is less than the level of significance. If not, then don't reject. And then state the conclusions in layman's terms. If we reject the null, then we have sufficient evidence to say that. And then we state the alternative in English. If we don't reject the null, we have insufficient evidence to say that. And then we state the alternative hypothesis in English. So let's now talk about confidence intervals for two proportions. Okay, so here's the formula for a confidence interval for two proportions. So basically, on the left side, we take two p tildes, p tilde 1 minus p tilde 2. So it's the first sample proportion, it's the, uh, it, which is what we're going to use for the confidence interval. And basically, it's x1 plus 1 divided by n1 plus 2. And then p tilde 2 is the same thing, but now we have the information from x and n from our second sample. Our n is our sample size, and x is the number of people that meet a certain characteristic. Like if we wanted to see the, from our sample size of 1,000, who would vote for the current president of the United States in the next general election? And say we got a, we got uh, 480 that say that they would vote for the next, for the current president in the next general election. Then x would be 480. Okay, and then our critical value we get that from the z distribution. And everything to the right of the plus or minus sign we, we use the margin of error, uh, or everything to the right of the plus or minus sign is the margin of error. So what we'll be using to calculate this now you could do this by hand, but it is a big formula. You can use the Excel tool, and then here's the Excel tool. It's under the two proportion tab, and so we can use this to calculate. Uh, we can get our confidence interval, which is down here, and we just have to input some information over here to get the get the results that we need. Okay. Um, we'll talk about the requirements for a confidence interval in just a sec, but basically the sample sizes from both groups have to be greater than or equal to five. Okay. So let's go through an example of this. So the Royal Botanic Gardens, Cranbourne, is a 914-acre conservation reserve outside of Melbourne, Australia. Predation by foxes have been an ongoing problem in the gardens. To reduce the risk to native species, a systematic program of killing foxes is implemented. 
One way to monitor the presence of foxes is to look for fox tracks in specific sandy areas called sand pads. Before beginning a systematic effort to reduce the fox population, ecologists observed fox tracks in the sand pads 576 out of the 950 times the sand pads were observed. After eliminating some of the foxes, the ecologists observed fox tracks in the sand pads 268 times out of the the uh, 1,359 times they checked sand pads. The ecologists wanted to know if there was a difference in the proportion of times fox tracks are observed before versus after the intervention to reduce the fox population. So we can use the formula here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers here and I'm going to plug it into this, this, um, this tool here, this Excel tool. So it's under the two proportion tab. So I'm going to say, so my, my first x is going to be 576, so I'm just going to put that in there. And then my sample size for this first sample is 950, okay? And then my, my x for my second sample, so it's the after, is 268. And then the sample size for my, my after sample, my second sample, is 1359, okay? And so here's my confidence interval here, 0.371. 0.4468, okay? And so therefore we say that we are 95% confident that the true proportion differences between the before and after uh, the intervention is between 0 0.3709 and 0 0.4460. Now this is the key part. Similar to what we did with independent samples and, and, and paired sample t-tests back in Unit 2, we look to see if zero is in the confidence interval. And since zero is not in the confidence interval, there is a difference in the proportion of times of fox tracks are observed before versus after the intervention to reduce the fox population. So it's going back to see if whether or not zero is in the uh, in our confidence interval for the proportion difference. Okay. Now a couple of things you should know: the requirements to check for a two-proportion procedure is that both sample sizes are greater than or equal to five. Also, that the both are from simple random samples. We can just look at the sample size. In fact, if you look at the, if you look at the previous problem, you can see that the sample size is large. Or you can just look at the output here to see it, to see the same thing. That's that's pretty straightforward, and that's one of the reasons. Uh, as long as our sample size is greater than five, that's why we're using the the plus the plus four estimator for dealing with confidence intervals because we can get a small sample size. Okay. So, and then the next thing is the descriptive statistics. You just have to list what the p the p hats are from both for both groups, it's two sample proportions. And you can use pie charts or bar charts to, to display the graphs, okay? So here's here's the two p hats, you can get that from here. So 60.606 uh, versus 0.197, this is the before and after intervention. Now let me just show you here, here's an example of two box plots, or excuse me, not two box plots, but two bar charts side by side, this is, um, well, this is for another problem, so this is, I'll show this to you a little bit later. But this is an example of a box, uh, or a, I said box plot two times, two times already. But this is a bar chart, and this is for another problem, and I'll show that to you later. And this is an example of a pie chart. Notice here that we have two separate pies and two separate bar charts for each of the different populations. There's going to be a problem I'll show you later between males and females. Okay, and so we can use that information to to get, uh, we, we can present this results in either way, either a bar chart or a pie chart, but we have two separate graphs, one for each uh, population. So uh, I will continue the next, or part two of the videos, I'll be talking about the two, uh, two proportion hypothesis tests and then I'll wrap it up.